When people have knee pain, the first thing that they'll do is they'll look at the knee directly. So you've probably been told you need to do a knees over toes exercise, try to get some length in your quads or in your knee. But the real issue could be lying one step above the knee in the kinetic chain. And by the end of this video, I'm gonna teach you how to assess and address your mobility so you know exactly what you need to do to get your knees moving as efficiently as possible. But before we get started, let's just take 10 seconds to break down what exactly is the knee. I always ask this question. The knee connects the femur to the tibia, or it connects the thigh to the shin via the kneecap right here. Now, we know that this relationship is very important because when we look at what the knees do, they carry out two main functions. If we take a look at my skeleton here, I'm gonna bring you down a little bit too, if you don't mind. Right here, you can see that when we look at the function of the knee, we know that the knee is capable of bending and extending, right? Now, knee bending is carried out by the hamstrings. It brings the thigh closer to the shin, whereas knee extension or knee extending is carried out by the quads, and the job here is to bring the shin away from the thigh, from here to here. Although the thigh and the shin can work together via the knee, it's important to understand that they also work together independently. You can see that these two move independent of each other as well, and one of the most common issues I've seen with people in knee pain after doing hundreds of mobility assessments is a lot of times people with knee pain lack rotation at the hip. And this is really important to understand, right? Because what does the hip do? Since the hip is a ball and socket joint, sorry, I just moved you again without any warning. Since the hip is a ball and socket joint, it's primarily responsible for internal and external rotation. And for you to understand that correctly, I'm gonna need to take my pants off. Yeah, I'm still gonna be wearing shorts, you freak. Since the hip is a ball and socket joint, it's gonna be responsible for two main movements internal rotation and external rotation. You'll hear these as hip internal rotation, hip external rotation, or medial rotation of the femur at the pelvis and lateral rotation of the femur at the pelvis if you're in school. Now, internal rotation of the femur is just as it sounds. It's any movement that involves the front of the femur turning in. So the way we see that is something as simple as maybe you just point your knees in, maybe you rotate your feet in, that's gonna create that inward rotation. We can also see it when the shin moves out, but the knee or the thigh stays in place. If I drive my heel out to the side, my femur is also going to point in. And hip internal rotation also happens during hip flexion, which is also super important to understand. And I want you to get up and try this. If you're seated, stand up. I don't care if you're doing some cardio, if you're eating something, you can get up real quick. So when we are doing hip flexion, right? Hip flexion is this movement right here where my knee comes up, or you can also think about it as a kick kicking movement, I'm going to need a level of internal rotation at the hip. And you can see this for yourself. If you turn that knee out to the side, which we're creating, external rotation, good. I'm not gonna be able to get my leg in front of me very high. I'm gonna finish right here. Whereas if I turn my foot in like this, now I'm gonna be able to get quite a bit higher because hip flexion and hip internal rotation they work together. Hip flexion and hip internal rotation are synergistic movements. So you can't really have efficient flexion without efficient internal rotation. And this fundamentally makes sense to us, right? Because if I squat and my knees come in like this, I can feel a lot of pressure on the inside of the knee. This movement right here, internal rotation, can happen in the squat accidentally. Likewise, the most common position for non-contact ACL tears happens right here when people are cutting or changing direction where that knee is falling inside the ankle and the hip, once again into internal rotation. And then this one's a little bit more niche, but if we think about how people tear their hamstrings or strain their hamstrings, especially with my kickers out there, football punters and kickers, a lot of the times, right, if we think about what a good kick looks like, they're gonna wind up back here with everything turned out, right? Winding up like this. And when I finish my kick, I'm kicking through and my foot is gonna have to turn in. And if I don't have sufficient internal rotation at my end range, you can feel that right away. You're gonna feel a deep stretch in the hamstring. And if we can't tolerate that, we can strain it or tear it. And 
even with my mixed martial artists, when you're kicking, you're gonna need a level of internal rotation if you're trying to kick someone in the face, which I hope you're able to do one day. Now let's test your hip internal rotation to see if this is something that's affecting you. All you need is a foam roller, you can use a thick water bottle, that's fine as well. And you just need to sit up in a position where your feet are dangling like a giddy kid on the swing set or something, you know? Keep the foam roller between the knees, you're gonna keep a gentle push and then you're gonna drive your heels out to the side, okay? We're looking for 30 to 40 degrees of internal rotation. If you have like 60 degrees, that's, that's way too much, that might be a problem. If you're super locked up here, you feel like your hips are cramping up on you, that could mean we're really tight. Or another really common issue is people are asymmetric. So maybe the right side goes a lot, but the left side goes very little and that's something we want to be mindful of as well. And be sure that you're testing this correctly, okay? A lot of the times, people will lean over to the side trying to get to that range of motion, and it's not super accurate. And when I'm testing my clients, if I see a lean like this, I'm always gonna be measuring down the center line and then measuring that shin relative to that line rather than the femur, because now we're tucked in over here. It's almost like when I'm lying down like this, it's basically the same as this. So I need to adjust my lines correctly. And you should be measuring once again around 30 to 40 degrees here. For most of you, if you don't have access to a goniometer, you can use some square or rectangle. This is literally the box of some puzzle. This is gonna be 45 degrees. So if I keep this right at the center of my knee, can I drive out and make contact with the other corner? So for me, I'm passing, this is totally fine. If you find that you can't hit that spot, maybe you get right here where see where my foot is underneath the box, that could be a sign that you're not hitting that range of motion either. Now there's two main issues with hip internal rotation. People either lack internal rotation or they're weak in hip internal rotation. So let me show you how to address both of those. So let's say first you don't have mobility here. You just failed the mobility assessment. Coach Rich just sent you a video of him laughing at your hip internal rotation, how lackluster your performance was. It happens to the best of us. Not a big deal. A super simple stretch is the knee knocker. So what I'll have you do is you can lie on your back right here. And I'm sorry, guys, you're about to see parts of Coach Rich and a view of Coach Rich that maybe you, it's coming out of your worst nightmares, okay? But I'm, I'm gonna give it to you anyway so you understand. While you're lying back here, okay, what you're gonna try to do while keeping the base of your feet, bases of your feet on the floor, you're gonna try to bring your knees together. And for most of you, this is gonna be too easy, so you need to get a little bit farther apart. And the way that I like to do it is at the top, I like to push those knees out as much as I can while keeping my feet planted and then keeping my knees in. And for a lot of you, you might feel this pressure in the knees, on the inside of the knees. Don't push through that. We just need to modify the position. What you need to do is, push your belly button up or maybe keep something underneath your low back even. Right away, this is gonna put you into, and you know what, pause for a second. See if you can figure out the biomechanical methodology behind this. Figure out the why, the proof. Cool, good, I'm, I'm glad you figured that out. When you create this arching in the low back, right? What's actively happening is you're tucking your hips into an anterior pelvic tilt. An anterior pelvic tilt is a flexed hip position. And we just talked about when we flex the hips, it's synergistic with internal rotation. So this is taking us to that end range of internal rotation. And now you'll be able to drive those knees in and you should feel much more pressure on the hip. You can see, and I'm gonna show you both ways just so you can kind of AB this. If I keep my feet out here, I can get my knees to touch. Like right, right here, I'm, I'm, this is where I'm touching. But if I get my hand underneath my back, all of a sudden, see, I have less range of motion. And significantly less, I think this is quite a bit less range of motion compared to something like this, where I'm instantly able to get my knees to touch. So that can be a phenomenal way to lengthen ourselves in hip internal rotation, but how do we strengthen this position? Well, one of my favorite exercises is the side lunge. And I see this exercise getting done incorrectly quite a bit. So when we're setting up for this exercise, it's gonna be really important that you're setting up with both feet facing forward, okay? This positioning right here is gonna be really important and you're gonna be slightly pigeon-toed. And the reason we pigeon-toe, when my big toes are facing forward, you can say hi 
side of my big toes if you'd like, you can see that my knees actively want to track out to the side. So this actually isn't our true neutral. We wanna think about our middle toes. I, I can't really lift them very well, but yeah, you can say hi to them too. When my middle toes face forward, now my knees are gonna move forward as well, and this is gonna create a good neutral alignment. Now, once we're in this slightly pigeon-toed position, our goal here is to get our hip knee and ankle to be in line with each other from the front and I want to see a 90 degree angle from the side. 90 degrees from the shin to the thigh, 90 degrees between the thigh and the spine. What I don't want you to do, although it is really cool, we'll probably get you some views on Instagram, is something like this, a deep Cossack squat. When you get into this type of position, which is super deep, this knee bend is the exact same thing as like a pistol squat, right? And those are great, but that's not actually training the motion here. What we're trying to do is load through the frontal plane or the transverse plane technically and create rotation here side to side at a shorter knee bend position to load up all the musculature that's responsible for internal rotation. And if this is easy for you, don't be afraid to grab a dumbbell. I have clients that are doing 80, 90, even 100 pounds on their side lunges, and they're getting very strong moving side to side and rotating. And this improvement in their rotational capacity at the knees, ankles, and hips is getting them stronger and getting them moving better, but more importantly, it's getting them moving pain-free. So these are just a couple exercises that are gonna work really well for your knees and your hips. But if you want a program that shows you exactly what exercises you need to do for your body, I would love to get you started with your mobility assessment. That way we can get 20 different data points, really design a program that's going to attack all the areas in your body that aren't moving well, or maybe they're moving a bit too much, and set up a good, clean, custom training plan. That way you know exactly what you need to do moving forward and take the guesswork out of your routine to get you back to pain-free performance. So you can get started by clicking the link below. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with a friend. That is the best way to support the channel. And drop a comment below. Let me know if you're someone who's just looking to improve your knee health, let me know. But if you're a personal trainer, physical therapist, chiropractor, doctor, massage therapist, whatever else, who's taking this information to better help your clients, let me know too. Because the more I know about you guys, the more I can create content that's actually tailored to what you need. And we can make sure that we're helping as many people as possible. So hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.